Hi, this is the second part of hypothesis testing chapter. Um, we will study some new concepts, uh, nested models or hierarchical models. So as I said in the last part, I mentioned that hypothesis is another assumptions. So, uh, so assumptions and hypothesis will make another model with more assumptions. So then you can compare uh, unrestricted model is just has only has only original assumptions and restricted model has uh, original assumptions as well as hypothesis you want to test. So you don't know whether your hypothesis is correct or not. So you may you can consider two different models depending on your attitude toward the toward the hypothesis. So if you believe the hypothesis is wrong, then you don't use that assumptions and then we call that unrestricted model. If you think hypothesis is true, then you can include the assumption as in, into the model and then you have more assumptions and it is called the restricted model. So it is a hierarchy. So uh, unrestricted model nests the restricted model because it is, it is more, it, it, it is more restrictive and it is milder. So there is a hierarchy between them. Usually we assume that um, classical, Classical linear regression model is uh, is nested to IV regression model because CRL is a special case of x equals to z and m equals to k, the number of instrument equals to the number of endogenous variables. So the <clears throat> so in this case <clears throat> in the in the in the IV regression model, just x and z uh, may be different, but in the classical linear regression model, they should be the same. So in that sense, classical linear regression model is more restrictive, and uh, if you relax that, it becomes IV regression model. So you may understand uh, hypothesis testing is comparing these two models. This is another way to understand hypothesis testing. So two models, which is a restricted model, unrestricted. So I will think about a more general setup for this uh, argument. Suppose that the original model or unrestricted model is given by this equation. So it is exactly the M estimation principle and we are going to we, we borrow the same idea from from estimation, M estimation. So suppose that with, uh, without the hypothesis, the original model satisfies this condition. The, the parameter value in, from the unrestricted model satisfies maximum of this criterion function. Q is the criterion function and Q zero, zero means it's a true uh, criterion function. And then consider a hypothesis given by R theta equals to zero. So the restrict, restriction is simplified, simplified by R theta. So for example, beta equals to one can be written as beta minus one equals to zero. So it is not a big problem to write it. Then 
the restricted model can be written as the, the parameter for the restricted model was the same, but subject to r theta equals to zero. So there is an additional restriction uh, in the maximization problem or the restriction may directly change the restriction directly changes may directly change the criterion function so it, it depends on the how the restriction is imposed uh, and like you will see some examples to use this framework. This is a general framework. So let's think about variable selection. So <clears throat> the original model, unrestricted model, model U, unrestricted model looks like this. But you think x2 may be irrelevant, which means or theta2 equals to 0. So then model restricted model becomes this. So, so then in this example, it is clear that the, the sum of the expected mean squared errors is the criterion function even though it is, it has to be minimized. And you know, the true beta minimizes this mean squared error and the restricted model, unrestricted model goes this way, has this uh, criterion function and restricted model can be written as uh, arc mean beta Q0 beta subject to beta two equals to zero. You can write it this way, or you may define beta without x2. They are equivalent. So in the end, they are equivalent. The minimization problem, the least squares problem with the restrictions uh, is equivalent. First example. Second example. Functional form test. So, in this case, the original model is nonlinear. So, So you consider a general nonlinear, like higher order polynomial regression model, but you think uh, it doesn't need, it's more linear. It's uh, you may so test zero and beta three equals to zero. So if the quadratic and cubic terms go away, then the estimation will be much easier. So you wanna test it then the model restrict, restricted model becomes the model that you see every day. Then it is clear and then it, it is actually equivalent to this problem. I don't need to write much about, so then Q zero beta can be written as 
let me simply copy it. So the unrestricted model minimize this mean squared error, but restricted model does not need to. Just need just need to minimize this part. So it's this is the difference. Or beta r beta one r is arg main q0 beta subject to uh, beta 2 beta 3 r0 so this is how we can test the functional form choice and example 3 endogeneity test. So it tests whether you, uh, whether a variable is endogenous or exogenous. So in this case, we will start from restricted model. So this is the restriction that we want to test. We would like to test whether X is exogenous or not. And Unrestricted model may be non-zero, but there exists Z such that so the second assumption is those is more general. So this is the unrestricted model. So and in the first assumption, the instrumental variable is not needed. In that sense, it can be more mild, milder, but we view the unrestricted model is milder in this case because it doesn't restrict X. Then GMM for unrestricted model becomes with the moment condition that the moment condition for the unrestricted model is given by this. And in this case, uh, the restricted model can be written as Be written as this. So here in the restricted model, you have additional moment condition from X. Uh, you have additional moment condition from X, and it will it in like if x itself enters the moment condition then the instrumental variable will have zero weight in the end it it, it, it does not affect your estimation at all so well, you can understand it either way or you may write it as uh, here beta so I had to write beta. The restricted model can be written as uh, subject to R beta, which is
So you may minimize the original criterion function with additional restriction. So it, if you put this uh, uh, restriction, then automatically the instrument uh, does not does not affect the instrument is unnecessary is redundant. So it'll be it'll be the same as your GMM IV regression model estimator. So and example four over identification test model unrestricted suppose that there is so i suppose that the regression model has a scalar endogenous variable x and then we assume there exists in, an instrumental variable. And what you want to test here is you have an additional instrumental variable. And there is an over-identifying instrument. Z2 is an additional instrument that uh, you want to test. You, you, you are not sure if Z2 is independent or not, but you want to test it. So then in this case, conditions, the moment conditions are different. So unrestricted model will have this and restricted model has moment conditions also uh, go this way there are two dimensional two moment conditions in here So, um, so most of the hypothesis testing problems can be understood in this way by comparing two different models, restricted model, unrestricted model. I believe you have learned uh, the restricted regression models, restricted regression problem in Econometrics 1 or undergraduate Econometrics class. So we, the focus of this class will be on these two. So these are easy and, and we will study more on endogeneity test and over identification test. Um, and that's what we are going to do. Uh, by the way, then, So it is, it is, uh, now we, I explained the hypothesis testing as if it is a compar comparison of models. So there is a huge literature called model selection in Ecrometrics. So model selection is exactly hypothesis testing with different models. And one important issue there is non-nested model selection. So when two models are nested, like one model is nested to the other, then it is easy to implement the comparison. But if there is no nesting relationship, the problem is a little bit more tricky. So here, think about, you may have this model, model one, and compare model one and model two. Which is better? There is no, no nesting relationship. None is more general than the other. So uh, it, is, it is a different, different literature and it requires more complicated discussions. So I'm going to skip. I will not consider such problems in this chapter. Uh, 
uh, if you are interested, study uh, model selection topics in econometrics. So open some econometrics, econometrics textbook and read model selection parts. Then uh, another important concept to explain here is efficiency and robustness. So we considered the, the original assumptions and hypothesis. So restrict unrestrict model as original assumptions and restricted model as original assumptions plus hypothesis. By the way, these terms are not uh, commonly used econometrics terms. I just, I'm, it's my own terms. So no one says it, no one calls it original assumptions uh, just for the exposition in this class. It's only used within our class. And our setup is we believe the original assumptions are true. We do not suspect if these assumptions are wrong. They are true, but the hypothesis is questionable. This is our problem. So then think about this. Now, depending on the hypothesis, depending on the hypothesis, you can uh, think two cases. If hypothesis is true, then model R is correct. But model U is still correct, but less efficient because uh, more, so having more assumptions will help your estimation. And, and in this case, if hypothesis is true, if hypothesis is true, then Restricted model has more assumptions, so it is better to use more assumptions if it is true, if the assumptions are true. But the problem is, if the hypothesis was wrong, then model R is incorrect, is wrong. Model U is still correct. So, so that is the difference. We call this robust. So in other words, model U is robust in the sense that it means that it's not affected by uh, the potentially wrong assumption. So it survives even if the assumption is wrong, if, even if the hypothesis is wrong. We call that robust. Uh, but model U, uh, model R is efficient, provided that the hypothesis is correct. So it is more vulnerable. It's not robust, but it is more efficient because you, because it utilizes because it utilizes more assumptions, more informations. So you may. Uh, efficiency, you, you may be familiar with the term efficiency. It's just, you can interpret this as uh, the amount of information in your estimation. So if you have more, uh, like so, so statistically, efficiency is defined by the smaller standard error or smaller variance of the estimator. And intuitively, you can think it as uh, information about in the, the amount of the information. Like if you have more data, your estimator will have smaller variance, so it will be more efficient. And in other words, and like so, more data implies more amount of the data, more data, uh, more more information, so uh, more efficiency. And more in assumption, more assumption also implies more information and more efficiency. There, same. And also, in many empirical papers, has section named robustness check. So in many empirical papers, uh, robustness check is required or like uh, usually recommended uh, and uh, seriously considered because 
when you have a model, you are using many assumptions. You are using uh, some assumptions to, to get to your estimation result. But if, what if some of the assumptions change it or wrong or are wrong? So does your does conclusion depend on your assumptions or survive even if the assumptions change? Uh, this is an important question. So if you run a linear regression model, you get a nice result. But if you consider a quadratic regression model, your result may be wrong. Or in the, some, some you, you may obtain the result because you assumed all the vari variables are exogenous, but some of them may be endogenous. Then your result will break down. So this is, uh, about this is the robustness of your estimation results. Your estimation results uh, is not robust if it breaks down when some of the assumptions fail. Um, so for example, it includes changing variables or changing functional forms or changing uh, the, the sample using different samples, like different years or different variables, different uh, subgroups, like using, like for example, if you, uh, if some, some your estimation results may be coming from, only from specific, specific subgroups, like, uh, like say, a uh, small group of people, then, uh, that may, may, the results may fail if you drop the small group from your sample. So that's another robustness check. Uh, and another related term is specification test. Specification test is a kind of hypothesis testing, but the approach is a little bit different. The difference here is, say, suppose that your model, your uh, unrestricted model, your model has, has, a, has five assumptions. Say A, B, C, D, E. Uh, you want to test, so usually hypothesis testing tries to test uh, some of them, some of them. Specifically, like I would like to test assumption A or assumption A and B at the same time in this way. But specification uh, tries to test whether all of them are correct or some of them are wrong. It does not matter. So it just, it tries to test all of these. All of these are true or not. So if it if, if fails, if the assumption is rejected, if the model is rejected, you don't know which assumption fails. So that's uh, just different approaches, different uh, philosophy. But still, still you need to have uh, extra identifying condition for a specification test. For example, suppose that for one endogenous variable x, there are two instruments. So typical, like what we consider hypothesis testing, considers x z1 is, is valid for certainly, but z2 is questionable. Let's test Z2. This is typical hypothesis testing, but specification test, 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 
test jointly. The procedures are actually the same, but uh, the in, in this example, in this example, it, the, the example is too simple. So the procedures are the same between this hypothesis testing, testing only for Z2 or testing the joint, them jointly. But when the model becomes more complicated, uh, the specification test may be a little bit different from a more specific hypothesis testing. So in this course, we do not consider specification test uh, and focus more on the specific hypothesis. Uh, this, is, uh, this is it for now.